Thank you, President Jenkins. It's an honor to be here this evening. I want to acknowledge the Board of Trustees, the faculty, the staff, the family and friends who have made this uh, evening possible for the graduates and tell you what an honor it is to be here. President Jenkins is right. I accept one invitation a year to give a college commencement. I picked Moraine Valley Community College. And the reason for it, the reason for it was obvious as she told the story of the students in this graduating class. What a cross section of our country, our state, and our world that have come together here at Moraine Valley. I hope this is still working. This may be the shortest commencement, no. <laughs> but the fact that these students were introduced and told their stories, or the president told their stories, I think is a great story about education and opportunity in the United States of America. For those of us lucky enough to be born here and those of us who found this great country. Now many of us know that a commencement speaker is an absolutely essential part of commencement, but it's like the dearly departed at a funeral, a necessary part of the ceremony, but not expected to say much. <laughs> I'll try to stick to that rule. Let me start off by saying that uh, each of us comes to education with our own family background, our own personal story. My story, I'll make very brief. My mother and my father were my inspiration in life. My mother was an immigrant to this country, brought here at the age of two from Lithuania. She made it to the eighth grade, but not beyond. My father was born on a farm in deep southern Illinois, went to a one-room schoolhouse, and never went beyond the eighth grade. Despite that, my two brothers and I were goaded and inspired to higher education. When I would come home from school with my report card every six weeks, it was a big deal. My mom and I would sit down at the kitchen table and she would inevitably say to me, you know you can do better. And then she'd look at that other side of the report card on my de deportment and say, why do I see all these check marks? Well, I overcame my mother's stern rebuke, went on to college and law school, and come here today to congratulate you on what you are achieving and really looking forward, I hope, to what you can do in this world that you are about to become a big part of. I read something the other day that stayed with me. It's from the great poet Maya Angelou. She said, this is a wonderful day. I've never seen this one before. And there's never been a day exactly like this one before for so many of you. Your college commencement. What a day of celebration. But the question is, what will you use with the gifts you've been given, with the knowledge that you've learned right here at Moraine Valley Community College? Whether you step into a career or a university, you're all graduating into a world that seems to have more than its share of harsh words and sharp elbows. There are a lot of sharp short tempers out there. A lot of people seem to prefer arguing about problems rather than solving them. The problems that we face pile up. One choice we each have, of course, is to be angry or discouraged. But if you were that type of person, I don't think you'd be sitting there in a cap and gown this evening. There is a better choice. If you don't want to live in an angry world, be kind, be thoughtful, be respectful of others even if you don't agree with them. Listen more, judge less. And as hokey as it may sound, believe you can make this world better, because you can. Let me tell you a few stories of people who really made a difference. The first story is about a man who's a friend of mine. I met him more than 20 years ago in a country called Bangladesh. His name is Muhammad Yunus. He was a Fulbright scholar who earned a PhD in economics at a distinguished American university in the 1960s. Muhammad Yunus, with that training, could have written his ticket anywhere, but he decided to go back to Bangladesh, this new nation, one of the poorest nations on earth, to try to help. In 1974, a famine struck Bangladesh. As he walked to work at a university one day, Muhammad Yunus passed the bodies of those who had died during the night and many who were dying as he watched them. Their starvation, he said, seemed like a rebuke to all the elegant economic theories that he'd learned in the classroom. 
So he decided to study poverty by consulting the real experts, poor people themselves. At the time, conventional wisdom said the solution to global poverty was bankrolling massive development projects in poor nations. Eunice took the opposite approach. He founded a bank called the People's Bank, or in his language, the Grameen Bank, which lent small amounts of money, $10 or $20, to the poorest of the poor, to destitute widows, abandoned wives, landless laborers, and desperately poor people. He called it something, a term that hadn't been used before, micro-lending. He found with micro-lending that $10 could change a person's life. It could turn a beggar into a businessman. I remember traveling to Uganda to one of these Grameen Bank operations and meeting with a woman and asking her what that small loan of $20 that had been made by the bank to her did. And she said, my knees have grown, grown soft. I said, your knees have grown soft? What does that mean? She said, before I got that $20 and was able to open up a stall in the market, I used to have to crawl on my knees and beg my husband for money to feed our children. My knees have grown soft. I have the money to feed my children. Over the last, over the last nearly 50 years, more than 240 million people on five continents have received microloans. One economics professor in Bangladesh with an idea, trusting and respecting people who were being discarded and ignored by so many others, made such a dramatic difference in the world. Muhammad Yunus won the Nobel Prize for his work. There are other stories closer to home. You don't have to fly to Bangladesh to see how the actions of one person can inspire others to make this world better and kinder. Remember last February? When the polar vortex hit Chicago, 25 degrees below zero, or what we call perfect Chicago Bears weather, <laughs> a woman named Candace Payne saw the weather forecast. She automatically thought about all of the homeless people in the city of Chicago living on the streets. And she said, I made a decision on the spur of the moment. I knew they were going to be sleeping on ice and snow, and I had to do something. So she pulled out her credit card and paid for 30 rooms in a Chicago motel. Then she got on Insta Instagram and asked people to help her pick up the homeless, drive them to the hotel. Soon she had a caravan of cars, SUVs, and vans with volunteer drivers. In the first group of people that she delivered, there were two pregnant women and a family of five. As the word spread, people started calling the motel to pay for more rooms. Calls came in from around the world. The hotel manager lowered the prices to accommodate more people. Restaurants donated food. Instead of renting 30 rooms for one night, they ended up with 60 rooms for several nights until that cold spell broke. The last story I want to tell you involves one of the most heartbreaking problems I know about a city that I dearly love, and I believe you do too, the city of Chicago. It is the ceaseless, senseless gun violence which we see in many of Chicago's poorest neighborhoods. In June of 2015, a mother was murdered while breaking up a fight on the corner of 75th Street and South Stewart Avenue in the section of Chicago known as Inglewood. That summer, there was another murder, one block away, and then another. Many people felt helpless but not Tamar Manasa. When she heard the news at her home living in Bronzeville, she decided she had to go back to Inglewood, the neighborhood where she grew up, and do something. She went to the same corner where that mother had been murdered. She pitched a tent on the corner, set out some lawn chairs, fired up a barbecue grill, and started cooking hot dogs. She gave away hot dogs and lemonade to anyone who wanted them. She brought colored chalk to the children in the neighborhood so they could draw on the sidewalks. She returned and did that same thing night after night after night. Soon other mothers joined her, first from the neighborhood and then all across the city. They called themselves 
Mothers and men against senseless killings, or mask. They knew that kids are less likely to act up when a mother's watching, and they figured that 15 pairs of mother's eyes watching kids was a way to keep peace in the neighborhood. They were right. They made the message clear. Don't mess with our kids. The mothers came every afternoon at 4 o'clock and stayed for at least four hours from the last day of school in June until the kids went back to class on Labor Day. What happened? 75 people a day got something to eat. And now after four years, they're reclaiming the neighborhood, one corner, one block at a time. I've been there. I passed out hot dogs and lemonade to kids and adults on that corner. No one has to show an ID or fill out a government form. Just simple acts of kindness and caring. What have they achieved? Violent crime and gun-related incidents in that census tract have gone down dramatically. For the past four summers, no one has been killed in that neighborhood. Neighbors who were strangers, <laughs> neighbors who were strangers became friends. Parents who never let their children leave the apartment in the summer now feel safe to let them play outdoors when the moms are on the corner. And the neighborhood elementary school is showing improvement in the outcomes for the students. So I promise to keep this commencement address short, and I'll wrap it up with one last thought. This is the most important advice I have for you. In the end, change doesn't happen because of the brilliance or current courage of just one person, not even if that person wins a Nobel Prize. Big problems are solved when one person inspires another person to act. Remarkable changes can happen when we feel we are part of a community. You've worked hard for your degrees and certificates, class of 2019. The world faces many challenges these days. I'm sorry there are so many that you have to grapple with. But you're not the first generation of Americans to face big challenges. With the knowledge you've gained here at Marine Valley Community College, with your family, with your faith, with your community around you, you can create a world you dream of and we're counting on you to do it. Congratulations, graduates. Now go have those parties.